pork shoulder and ham meat are taken from this picnic boning line and used for the manufacture of Spam, the most popular luncheon meat in the country. The picnic and ham meat is first ground through a medium coarse plate. A lab technician then takes a sample of the Spam mixture for a lean percentage test. Mixer blades stir ground Spam meat under vacuum and refrigeration until it becomes thoroughly blended. The raw material is then pumped to the can filling machines where the tins are automatically filled and vacuum sealed. The cans are then fed to the massive 65 foot hydrostatic cooking tower. When fully loaded, this towering structure can hold 38,512 ounce cans. The conveyor lines leaving the cooker carry the cans directly to automated equipment for orderly assembly and packaging. My freezer is nearly topped off, so I need to make some space for any critters that I might want to put in there later. So today, I'm taking some big chunks of meat out of the freezer and putting them up on the shelf. I'm making this delicious homemade Spam that everyone's going to love. So let's get started. So what exactly is Spam? Well, the name is a portmanteau for spiced ham, but when you get right down to it, Spam is just another sausage. But instead of freezing or smoking or drying to preserve it, Spam is cured and canned, so it can be shelf stable for probably an eternity. On their website, and of course here on the can, Hormel lists six simple ingredients for Spam. And those are pork with ham, and they count that as one ingredient, and I'll buy that. So I've got five pounds, or roughly two kilos, of fatty pork shoulder, and I'll add in one pound, 456 grams, of this already prepared ham. My brother-in-law gets a free ham for Christmas every year from his work, but he doesn't eat ham, so I've got three of these out in the freezer right now. So this is gonna free up a nice chunk of space out there. Now the next ingredient is salt, and I'm gonna focus on seasoning the pork because this ham is already seasoned and cured. So I'm gonna add in 45 grams, that's right around two and a half tablespoons to get to a 2% salt content. Next I've got some sugar, and this is a really sweet either honey baked or brown sugar ham, so I'm gonna go easy on the sugar and just add a couple of tablespoons. So this is 30 grams of white sugar. And now we've got potato starch, and I never see potato starch out here in my neck of the woods, so I'm using corn starch today, and I'll put in six tablespoons, or 50 grams, for this six pound recipe. And the next ingredient is sodium nitrite. This is pink cure number one, and since I'm pressure canning this, this cure is actually optional. But if you don't mind your spam being brown rather than pink, you can go ahead and leave it out. I'm using it because I want that nice pink color and it also affects the texture of meat and sausages. Again with this I'm only factoring in the weight of the pork shoulder because the ham is already cured. So for five pounds of fresh meat that is one teaspoon or to be more accurate 5.5 grams of pink cure number one. And the final ingredient is water, and that's just going to help me mix this all together. I'll dissolve the cure in the water, make sure I get it nice and evenly distributed in the mix. So I've got one half cup, or around 120 milliliters of water. So these are the ingredients for the OG Spam, but I definitely want to season some up with my own spices too. So after I get these mixed together, I'll divide this and I'll make two different flavors. So first I'm gonna grind up this pork, so I'll cut it into chunks that are appropriate for my grinder. And when you're doing this, you always wanna make sure your meat is partially frozen, kinda hard, and that is gonna make sure that it goes through that grinder and the blade slices it nice and clean rather than smushing it up. Yeah, see 
what we got in here. Brown sugar glaze. Just like that. Oh, it's one of those pre-sliced guys. So I'm just gonna carve out my pound of ham from this one. Gonna be looking for the leaner bits, I think. There we go, that's close enough. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of leftover ham. That's all right, I like some ham. I'm not grinding the ham. I'm just gonna put kind of a rough chop on it. I want some nice chunky bits in there. But if you prefer to grind it, go right ahead. I'll whip through this pork here. I've had my grinder parts out in the freezer, so they are icy cold. of that with the smaller plate here. Now I'm going to switch up to the large plate to get some different textures going on in there. All right, let's get our ham chunks in there. And we'll season this up. Here comes my salt. My sugar, that cornstarch, that's the binder. Now I will dissolve that pink cure in this water and get that down in there, and then give this a really good mix. a really good mix to make sure everything gets mixed throughout nice and evenly. We're looking good. Now this is going to go out into the refrigerator while I sterilize my jars by boiling them and get my canning station all ready to go. We'll get that all nice and hot while I go and pack those jars. When I'm doing this, I like to try and keep one clean hand and one sticky hand as much as possible. Of course, that's not always the easiest thing to do. So I'll grab a ball of this meat mixture and I wanna kinda work it and smooth out the outside to work off that surface air. Then we'll plop that down in there and now I need to press it into the bottom and work out the air underneath it and I can't quite reach it. So I use my grinder stuffer and then I can press that down nice and evenly. Putting a little oil on that stuffer will help it to not stick to the mix as well. So now I'll grab another ball of that meat, work off the surface air, plop that one down in there, and now I can reach it with my fingertips and just work it around the sides, pushing up the air, getting it out of there as much as you can. Just keep working around the edges and then work to the middle and pack that in there. And one more ball of meat should do for this jar. You don't want to overfill these jars, you want to leave a good inch and a half a headspace on these more than you do when you can a lot of other things because this is going to expand a bit and you don't want to make a big mess and you do want to get a good seal so leave plenty of headspace for these guys to expand a little bit. Now we want to get those threads and the rim of that jar cleaned up just as good as we can. Get as much of the grease off there as you can. Got some boiled lids here so they are sterilized. 
and just drop one of those on there get a ring and now we'll just tighten that till it's just snug you don't really want to crank down in there you need to allow some air to escape to create the vacuum and with the rest of this I'm gonna mix in some spices to create my own flavor I'm not gonna measure anything I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it so I've got a little bit of mace and that's kind of nutmeg it's a flavor you'll find in a lot of different sausage recipes so it's just a tiny dash maybe a quarter teaspoon or so now I'll get some cayenne pepper a good dose of cayenne for some bite that's maybe a tablespoon or so and I'll throw in a little bit of garlic powder too because I like garlic and we'll give that a good toss around in there and finish packing the jars. I will drop these down into here carefully. that up now we get a good steady stream of steam coming out of the port here we'll put the weight on there and then bring this up to 15 pounds of pressure when it gets up to 15 pounds of pressure adjust your heat to hold it there and we're gonna process these for 70 minutes Well, time is up, so now I'm just gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna walk away from this for several hours until it cools way, way down before I try and open it up. My jars are all cooled down now, and I can tell because there's some grease on top of these and there was some down in the water in the canner that I've had some siphoning, meaning that I've overpacked at least one of these jars, allowing some of the liquid from inside to escape from under the lid and run around and make a mess of things. Now that doesn't mean these are gonna be unsafe to eat, but I do, as usual, wanna check to make sure I've got a good seal on all of these. And of course the first check is just to press the tops and make sure none of them pop in and out. And those are all fine. And the second test is to remove the ring and grab them by the lid and just give them a little dangle and make sure that lid doesn't pop off of there. Now if any of them hadn't sealed up, then I could put them in the refrigerator and eat those within a week or so and they're gonna be fine. But assuming they're all good, I'll just clean these up real good before I put them up on the shelf. And when I do store them, I'm going to store them without the rings on there, just a little beyond there. And that will give me some protection against what's known as a false seal. Huh? As temperatures fluctuate in your storage area, this little pocket of air in here can kind of expand and contract just a little bit. And it can actually knock a lid off from time to time. And if I got the ring on there, when the air in there cools down again, it can reseat that lid after having allowed some air and maybe some bacteria to get in there, and that's going to grow in there, and then I'm in the danger zone. So I'll store them without the rings, and of course I'll retest these guys before I open them up and eat them. But before I put these up on the shelf, you know I got to bust one open to see how we did. Let's take a look at how we did. We got great color, nice and pink. Check out the grain. Looks really nice. It's held together really well. I got a feeling this is gonna be a little chunkier than the Spam Classic, but let's open up a can of that so we can get a good comparison.
original Spam is lighter color, finer grain, and it looks way, way fattier. All right, homemade Spam. Check out that bite. Mmm. Oh, it is good. Mmm. I like that chunkier texture. And as far as I remember, this tastes exactly like this. But I haven't had spam in a long time, so I better check. Oh. Wow. Oh, now I remember why I don't eat so much Spam. This stuff is very salty. This stuff, fairly salty, you know. Most of the time your cured meats are gonna be fairly salty, but this stuff is off the charts. But other than that, I gotta say, they taste exactly the same. As far as the texture goes, had I ground up the ham with the pork and run that all through the fine plate and probably added in some more straight pork fat, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference other than the shape of this. But you know what's cool about the shape of this? That'll fit perfectly on an English muffin or a biscuit. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. <laughs> not gonna realize the full potential of this homemade spam until I fry some up. Now this is how spam should truly be enjoyed. Ah uh, yeah, fried to a nice crispy perfection. <laughs> oh yeah, check out that bite. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Man, that is good. This recipe worked out perfectly. And if you're a true Spam connoisseur, you will want to grind it down further and make it saltier and add in some more fat. But to be honest with you, and I'm not just tooting my own horn here, I do like it this way a little better because it is less salty and it is less greasy. And I do like that chunkier mouthfeel when I bite into it. But either way you make it, it's gonna be delicious. I can't say for sure how long these are gonna last on this shelf, but because they are cured and pressure canned, it's gonna be a very long time, as long as I maintain a good seal. I can't wait to mess around with this recipe more and add some more flavors. I definitely wanna get some jalapenos involved here. So whether you need to make some space in your freezer, or you just wanna put some good post-apocalyptic eats up on the shelf, give this one a try, and I know you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.